Chapter 11. Why would you do that? Why would you say that? Gar had just gone back to Fee's flat, after dropping off Hope and Whimsy with Zazura and Celine. Gar wasn't entirely sure he liked the idea of dropping his children off with someone he'd really only met twice and someone he'd never met at all until today. Though Celine was obviously very close to Zazura, so it made him a bit more trusting of her. They both seemed like good people, but he was still anxious about the idea that they'd more or less be by themselves, especially in a city that they weren't all too familiar with. But they'd promised to keep in touch, and Hope also promised he wouldn't run off, or, in his words, take up strangers' offers for hot chocolate. Which was only partially reassuring, because Hope's tone and the way he elbowed Gar made him worry the tiniest bit. He was sure Zazara and Celine wouldn't let him run off and get lost, though. And if, by the end of the day, he was proven wrong, he would never trust either of those two again. He had doubts that anything would happen, though. Zazara seemed like a good person, and from the brief conversation he'd had with Celine, she had seemed fairly responsible, too. That didn't stop him from worrying, though. More frequently checking his phone for messages from any of them. He tried to shake off any of his extreme worries as he made his way inside, though. Taking a deep breath and trying to reassure himself that it would be fine. Minnow, are you okay? Phoenix's voice sounded worried as Gar walked into the living room. Her, Minnow, and Tilly were around the spider's tanks, while Minnow was holding one of their hands over the other making some kind of wince. The slight look of pain on their face made Gar immediately want to panic. I'm fine. Their voice was strained, and they looked like their jaw was slightly clenched. It's cool. You don't seem okay. Tilly had a deep frown on her face. It's all good. Minnow had their eyes, which were starting to water slightly, locked onto the OBT's cage. That made Gar take a few steps toward them almost instantly, though he didn't say anything while he did so. You fucking- Alright. Wait here, I'll be back with some supplies. Fee hissed, moving towards her room. Don't panic. It's gonna hurt like hell, but it's not deadly. Minnow was looking at their hand. I'm not panicking. They sounded pain, but otherwise, genuinely not panicked. What happened? Gar looked worriedly at Minnow, who greeted him with possibly the most twisted and pained smile they'd ever given him. I got a little silly. Minnow was struggling with the words. You can't say you got a little silly when you've been injured. Tilly took a deep breath. Phoenix let them feed Angela. They, uh, got a little too close and got bitten. Oh my god. Gar tensed slightly. It's alright. This is not the most painful thing to have ever happened to me. Minnow was squinting as their eyes continued to well up with tears. Okay, but you're still in pain. Tilly clasped her hands together, looking upset. It's not that bad. Minnow had a small smirk, which immediately shifted to another pained expression, and they hissed slightly. Phoenix came out of her room, holding a medical kit of some kind. Alright, come here. She ushered them towards the couch, setting the box on the coffee table, and pulling out a few things. Minnow did as Phoenix told them to, walking over to the couch, stumbling slightly, as if their balance was being thrown off a bit. The pain was clearly bothering them a lot more than they'd like to admit. Can one of you get a cup of water? Phoenix took a small glass bottle of something, while pulling Minnow's hand closer to her to brush some dark colored liquid on the bite. Gar immediately went to get water after she got the question out. He quickly returned with a glass to hand to Fee, briefly looking at how confused Minnow seemed. 
Keep your hand still. Fee reached over to grab a different bottle and shake two white pills into her hand. Take these. She held them out to Minnow. Minnow groaned, taking the pills with her free hand. So that's what the water's for. Minnow took the pills without actually reaching for the water. I don't really need it, they said to Gar, gesturing for him to move it away from them after they swallowed the pills. Phoenix stared at them wide-eyed for a second before shaking her head. Unbelievable, she muttered, beginning to bandage up the wound. I've heard that said to me so many times, it might as well be my name now. Minnow grumbled. Gar moved to set the cup of water on the coffee table, eyeing them awkwardly for a moment or two. What are you looking at me like that for? Minnow wrinkled their nose at Gar. Nothing. Gar watched Fee continue to bandage Minnow's hand. Dry swallowing pills is a thing to do. Tilly put her hands together. It's not that weird. Minnow was focused on Fee. I can't imagine how the hell you pull that off without choking on them. Fee cut off the material from the roll, holding the edge down with a strip of medical tape. Eh, I mean, you get used to it? Kinda? Minnow was still blinking some tears from their eyes. I've done it a lot. I've had to take some painkillers for headaches a couple of times without water. I guess you would have to. I always have water on me, so that's never been an issue, I guess. Phoenix sighed and stood up. That's about as much as I can do. If it starts getting harder for you to breathe, let me know. Other than that, it's just going to be really fucking painful. Her gaze locked on the ground, narrowing for a second. Sorry, I just had the strangest sense of deja vu. Gar bit into his cheek at the mention of that. Thanks. Minnow looked at their now properly bandaged hand with a head tilt. I will cope with the pain. They paused. By literally not thinking about it. They lowered their hand, turning their head to look out the window. Hopefully the pills will help with that in a few minutes. Fee glanced back at the spire tank. Next time, please listen to me when I say, keep your hands out of the tank, she's fast. So keep my hand in longer next time, gotcha. Minnow nodded before they winced again slightly. Then make sure it's closer to the tarantula. That's bold of you to say when your hand is still in slapping distance. Phoenix glared at them. Oh, what are you going to do? Hit my wound? Minnow held up their hand limply. Why don't you go ahead? Right in front of my partners. Phoenix looked between Gar and Tilly, her head tilted slightly. Are you asking permission? Tilly looked deeply confused. Please don't hit them. Gar put his hands together, as if he was about to pray. Partly because I don't want them to get hurt, and partly because I don't want to know what their reaction to that will be. Minnow smirked, but didn't say anything, raising their eyebrows at Phoenix. I house you, feed you, let you handle my spiders, and this is how you repay me. Fee shook her head, although she was... Probably joking. By not letting you hit. Gar mumbled the words, trying to process what she said. I mean, it's technically your fault. You didn't have to invite us, being so honest. You knew what was coming. Mino grinned a bit wider, while their eye twitched in pain. Without a word, she reached over and swatted the back of their hand. It didn't look hard enough to hurt much. Even knowing it likely wasn't too painful, Gar immediately felt himself tense, and he had to stop himself from moving over to grab Phoenix's arm. Minnow's non-injured hand flew up to where she'd swatted them to rub at it. Their face immediately had a bit of blush on it. Ow! What gives? 
They sounded slightly snappy, but not really in pain. Or not any more than they'd previously been. You knew what was coming. V raised an eyebrow, giving Minnow a smug smile. You know what? Fuck you. Minnow hissed at her. Not missing a beat, Phoenix glared at them. Fuck me yourself, coward. Okay, fine then. Minnow shouted. Gar suddenly felt very, very stupid. Like, he couldn't quite understand the words Minnow had just said. It seemed like Phoenix choked for a split second, before she broke into a nervous laugh. Wow, right in front of your partners? You're willing to cheat on your boyfriend with his sister? And I thought I was cruel. She wheezed. It finally clicked with Minnow what they'd said, their face turning an even deeper shade of teal than it had been before. They looked awkwardly between Gar and Tilly for a few seconds. Gar didn't think he'd ever seen their eyes so wide before. I- wait, I didn't mean- I meant- Minna was sputtering their words out, almost shaking while he did so. Fee couldn't respond, still trying to catch her breath from laughing too hard. Heard you loud and clear. Tilly was doing a surprisingly good job of holding a straight face, though she seemed entertained. I- oh, come on! Minnow put their hands up, speaking slightly desperately. I would never! You know that! The tips of their ears started to gain a teal hue, too. Gar held his hands over his mouth, as Minnow spun to look at him. I wouldn't! They insisted. I just didn't really process what she said! They were clearly struggling to keep their volume at a reasonable level. Gar didn't think he'd ever seen them this embarrassed before, and he'd seen them embarrassed plenty of times. You didn't process. Fee was leaning against the coffee table at this point, trying to stop herself from falling to the floor. Stop! Minna was chewing on their lip and starting to shake their hands a bit. I wasn't really paying attention to the words. What you said, you're not, I wouldn't, not like that. Tilly barely stifled a small laugh. Ugh. Minnow wrinkled their nose, their frown somehow deepening. I'm going to stop defending myself. You know I didn't mean to say that. Minnow cleared their throat. I know you didn't mean to say that. It doesn't make it any less hilarious. Phoenix wiped a tear from her eye. This is literal, actual bullying. Minnow's face was finally starting to lose some of the teal it had. I think I may or may not block your number. They had a lightheartedness to their tone, buried under false anger. You didn't send me anything other than memes and random bush pictures anyways. Fee snorted. You'll miss them when they're gone. Minnow had a mildly threatening tone to their voice. Mm-hmm, sure I will. It's cruel when you're not sent 30 images of the same exact piece of sidewalk. Gar tilted his head to one side. 30 individual images. None are copies. Minnow added. And he speaks. Phoenix clapped her hands, smiling at Gar. Forgive me for being stunned into silence. Gar gave her a tired look. To be fair, I wasn't expecting that response. Normally, I get embarrassed stuttering first. She shrugged. Minnow is always ready for anything. Tilly gave Phoenix a wide smile. I wasn't... I say things. Too fast sometimes. Minnow balled her hands into fists. You know what? Forget it. They immediately splayed their hands out taking a deep breath. Phoenix gave Tilly a look of pure horror. Please, never say anything like that again. Or insinuate. Never mind. She coughed. I am not interested in that with 
Minnow gritted their teeth. How about we talk about something else? That we can agree on. Fee looked away. So now she's on my side. Minnow rolled her eyes. Speaking of sides, that shaved spot on the side of your head looks like it needs a cut. You're really just being mean today, aren't you? Fee narrowed her eyes and brought her hand up to fiddle with the small tentacle that started to grow out. Just being honest, I saw it and I figured I should help you out, you know? In case you didn't notice. Minnow grinned, though. It wasn't nice in the slightest. Yeah, uh-huh, sure. Phoenix huffed. As if gars aren't worse. Seriously, when was the last time you got them trimmed? Gar immediately looked from Minnow to Phoenix. Um... Gar paused for a moment, thinking. Only he couldn't actually remember the last time he'd gotten them trimmed at all. So, he ended up finding an interesting spot in the floor to stare at instead. You really don't remember, do you? Tilly blinked at Gar. I would defend you, but... Actually, Phoenix is kinda right. Those things are getting pretty long. Minnow scrunched up their face a bit, though it seemed somewhat playful. I need to cut my own, anyway. I can do yours while I'm at it if you want. Fee tipped her head to the side. Gar tensed at the idea, staring at her with a slightly wider eye. Um, that... Gar struggled with the words. I, uh... He found it suddenly impossible to find the words he wanted to say. Gar, it's fine. I know how to cut octoling tentacles without, like, accidentally giving you another kid. Without giving you another what now? Minnow coughed. Tilly's brow immediately furrowed in confusion, and she looked from Fee to Gar and then back again. You know, I don't think I've ever been so confused and alarmed by a statement before. And I teach high schoolers. Hmm? Oh, you don't... Fee grimaced, glancing back at Gar. Do you want to handle the octoling biology lesson, or me? I think we've been teaching a ridiculous amount of biology lessons lately. Gar sighed. This one seems kinda important, because what the actual fuck does she mean by that? Minnow glanced at Phoenix. Okay, so, octoling tentacles are weird. She clasped her hands together, holding them in front of her mouth. I already knew that from when Gar grabbed my fingers with his, but go on. Minnow put their uninjured hand over their mouth. Tilly didn't say a word, but looked at Phoenix curiously. Gar bit into his cheek lightly. Well, if you cut them improperly, you could maybe possibly risk the severed tentacle turning into an octo trooper. Fee coughed. Which are sentient beings that are technically a different species than octolings. How? How? Minna looked even more lost now. Well, uh, there are nerves in octoling tentacles that allow them to be prehensile in nature that serves as a brain for the octo trooper. So when you sever them... Gar shifted slightly. This is so hard to explain. You can have children by cutting your tentacles? Minnow choked. In the most basic way of putting it, yeah. Gar blinked. Holy shit. Minnow muttered while Tilly just looked on, seeming slightly surprised. Safe to say, we don't need that happening today. Phoenix was staring at the ground. Sounds like it. Tilly nodded her head with an awkward smile. That wasn't entirely why I was worried. I had a feeling you knew. Gar looked over at Fee. Besides, you wouldn't even have to worry about the ones in the front. Wait, why? Minnow quickly turned to look up at Gar. Uh, another time. Gar waved one of his hands, rubbing at the back of his neck with the other. 
Minnow dipped their head, and their gaze went to the window instead. I don't want them to be cut too short is all. Partly why I haven't trimmed them in a very long time. Gar winced. Well, do you even want them cut then? I can leave them alone if you like them long. Fee gave Gar a half smile. Gar stared at Phoenix for what was probably a full minute. He honestly should get them trimmed. If they got much longer, they'd be annoying to put up. Not to mention, the moving to emotions quality they had, one he'd never been a particular fan of, would be made far more obvious the longer they were. At the same time, he'd rather work several shifts on a holiday than risk having them cut too short again. He never liked it when they were very short, and it took forever to grow them back out properly again, especially the front ones, which were twisted. But he did trust Phoenix, and he had doubts she'd do anything he told her he didn't like. If you promise not to cut them too short, Gar said, after a lot of hesitation. Swear I won't. I've been doing my own basically my whole life. Don't worry. She started making her way to the kitchen. I'll go grab the water and scissors. Gar watched her move to the other room and took a deep breath, holding it. He tried to force himself to relax. Phoenix would never do anything like he was imagining. She was trustworthy, and she'd been doing this herself for a while. She knew what she was doing. Yet, he couldn't help but worry a little about how this was going to turn out. He glanced over at Minnow, who was still staring out the window, and then to Tilly. She gave him a small smile of what seemed like reassurance. He let out the breath he was holding as quietly as he could. It was a few minutes before Phoenix returned, holding a small bucket of water in one hand, and a large pair of curved scissors in the other. It seemed like she had taken the liberty of cutting her own in the kitchen. The water in the bucket was starting to turn yellow from the cut stump. That was fast. Gar barely heard Minnow mutter. But by the time he looked over at them, their gaze was fixed again on the window. Alright, so what's the shortest you would be okay with? She took a towel off her shoulders, spreading it over the backrest of a chair. Gar locked his eyes on the scissors and had to remind himself not to tense his muscles. Preferably no shorter than a bit below my shoulders. He forced himself to look up at Fee. I'll cut them a few inches below that, then. She nodded, gesturing for him to sit down. Gar stood there, staring at where she'd motioned for him to sit. He felt anxiety bite at him again, casting another small look at the scissors and narrowing his eye. Gar, I can't exactly reach you up there. You're going to need to sit for me. Fee's voice was sympathetic, but Gar saw her ear flick with amusement. Gar stiffened again when she spoke, but forced himself to move forward and actually sit down like she told him to. He felt almost dizzy when he did, his eye flipping over to Tilly, who immediately gave him yet another soft smile. He felt Phoenix gently pull his tentacles over the back of the chair, then pause. Gar, if you're this nervous, I can stop. Your tentacles are flailing so much that I won't be able to get a clean cut. She sighed. Another, more indirect reminder of exactly why he needed them to get cut. That response was far worse the longer they were. He took it another, almost painfully deep breath, clasping his hands together and forcing himself to relax. No, it's fine. I'm sorry. Gar said, slowly. If you're positive... He could feel Fee tug lightly at his tentacles again, her hand stiffening for a brief second, before pressing against his shoulders. I'll start about halfway up your shoulder blades, then round them down from there. Does that sound good? Gar thought about it for a moment, almost nodding before he realized that wouldn't work for a response. Yes, that sounds fine. Phoenix began work on cutting his tentacles, and he tried to ignore the fact that this was incredibly awkward, considering Tilly was watching with slight interest. 
Minnow was finding it far more interesting to examine their bandaged hand rather than stare at Gar, so he felt a bit relieved, if only for that. He tried to keep himself calm, repeating something in his head about how he should trust Fee, and all the times he'd been proven right for trusting her. Every time his tentacles were cut, he would be reminded of how short they were cut when he was still in the military. He would ask if he could keep them long, and his request was always denied. Sometimes, they were cut shorter than they were supposed to be if he had bothered to ask at all. So, he stopped asking after the seventh plea and the seventh rejection. Even in the events where he'd been the one to trim them down after moving to the surface, he'd be tense, and would shake when he set the scissors against his tentacles. Sometimes, out of fear of cutting them too short, he would hardly trim them at all. Eventually, he'd stop cutting them altogether, which was exactly why Phoenix had to do this now. He tried to focus less on the memory of having his tentacles cut too short, and more on Phoenix again, biting into his cheek as he focused his attention back on her. Alright, that's your back two tentacles done, Fee said, dropping the severed tentacles into the bucket. I only cut about halfway up to your shoulder blades. It's a little choppy, but it should smooth out within the next couple of hours. Gar wanted so badly to stand up as quickly as he could now that it was done, but he figured he should ask for us just in case. Is it okay if I stand now then? He tried to keep the anxiousness out of his voice this time. Sure, you're all good. Unless you want to trim on the front two tentacles, but those don't look as bad. He heard the small clatter of metal as Fee put the scissors on a nearby table. Gar took a moment to think about it before he spoke again. Do you think they need it? They could go a little shorter, but it's not really needed. Phoenix shrugged. Okay. Gar nodded. He'd rather not push his luck with his anxiety today. It was probably better if he didn't trim anything that didn't need to be trimmed. He stood up, feeling himself finally relax a little. Thank you, Fee. He said, though it sounded more like a sigh than he'd meant for it too. Phoenix smiled in response. Tilly was still watching Gar, finally saying something after being quiet for the majority of the time. He looks really good, she said, more to Gar, then turned to Fee. Your experience really shows. It's impressive. Thanks. Didn't really have much of a choice though with everyone being too scared to come close enough to cut them for me. Phoenix moved to pick up the bucket, carrying it back to the kitchen. Why were people scared? Tilly tilted her head. Are they horrified by how yellow you are? Because, me too. Minna was smirking at her. Wait, no! Fee seemed to panic for a second, sharply turning around only to hit the edge of the bucket on the table spilling the partially dissolved contents on the floor. Shit! She hissed under her breath, but didn't move to clean it up. Staring at the puddle like she didn't know what it was, Gar immediately jumped when the bucket emptied, looking to Phoenix. Unfortunately, Minnow spoke faster than Gar. Holy carp, was the insult really that bad? They were looking at the floor in some sort of discomfort, do you have anything to clean that up? Gar hoped maybe the mess, and cleaning it, would be enough of an excuse to derail and forget about the conversation. Under the sink, Fee sighed, closing her eyes. Gar immediately moved past her to go look under the sink, casting her an anxious glance as he passed her. Tilly wasn't one to pry too much, so he hoped she'd drop it there and Minnow didn't seem particularly interested in a real answer to begin with. Gar also partially hoped Phoenix would find some way to avoid the question. He knew she probably didn't want to say the actual answer. He returned with a couple supplies to start cleaning up the mess, which Minnow was still staring at in what looked to be the smallest bit of horror. You know, they could use something like that for those scary movies. Minnow squinted slightly. It does not feel good to look at. I would have kept it in the bucket if I could. 
Fee grimaced. I know, but still. Minnow finally looked away from it. Gar started working to clean up the mess, kneeling down so he could start cleaning up the inky water that had spilled across the floor. He tried to place any of the even slightly solid pieces back into the bucket, though most of them had melted enough to be mixed in with the water on the floor and cleaned up with the rag. As awful as it looked, this was not the worst mess he'd ever had to clean up. I'm sorry about this, Phoenix mumbled. You shouldn't have had to. Gar knew what she meant. It's fine. He thought briefly of what to add to that before he spoke again. I don't mind cleaning. Besides, I've cleaned up a lot of awful messes. He only meant half of that in a literal sense. He'd cover up or derailed many conversations. None of the nature that he knew Phoenix and would talk about right now. But he had dodged some risky questions that his kids had asked him many times. His kids were much more insistent than Tilly, so it helped that she didn't pry. I'm pretty sure I've seen Hope make a bigger mess by himself. Tilly laughed lightly. That kid and putting stickers on everything, or shattering any dishware he gets his hands on. Relatable. Minnow cleared their throat. I'm surprised your apartment is as clean as it is. Fee let out a weak laugh still staring at the floor. It's only as clean as it is because I keep myself busy constantly cleaning it. Gar sighed. I remember when I would visit and you'd always be busy sweeping something up or putting something away. Tilly put her hand over her mouth. I don't know much about that, but I do remember Gar saying he had no hobbies a couple years ago, and I think that might explain why. Minnow grinned at Gar. It was a hard and continuous job. Gar shook his head slightly as he finished cleaning up the last of the mess. Harder and more continuous than our actual job? Minnow raised an eyebrow. Sometimes, yes. He couldn't, or more so didn't want to, remember all the things that had been broken on his floor, or the time Whimsy went through a cat phase and started mimicking Judd's meowing and managed to climb her way onto tables and shelves just to knock things off. He loved his daughter, but he absolutely hated that phase. How many valuable things have they broken or destroyed anyway? Tilly tilted her head. I have since learned to not place value in any item I own, so I can't answer that. Gar shrugged as he stood back up. I can imagine. Fee nodded. Not even hard to break things? Like metals? Tilly asked. I've heard what Minnow is capable of doing to a pair of scissors, and I think Hope has been taking notes from Minnow, so I don't expect any of my metal things to last. Gar glanced over at Minnow. Hey! Minnow put their uninjured hand on their hip. Why are you throwing me under the bus? I'm being serious. I think he's genuinely taking notes. Gar bit at his cheek. Minnow suddenly opened their mouth like they were going to say something, but didn't actually speak on anything. I don't know that the notes are on how you destroy things, but he does. He added. Huh. Minnow stared at the floor for a moment. Fee suddenly looked nervous. Is Minnow the only one he's been taking notes on, or... She asked, biting the inside of her cheek. Gar glanced over to Fee, unsure of what she was trying to get at with that comment. I can't be 100% sure, but I have a feeling he's taking some from you as well. He narrowed his eye. Fuck, she hissed under her breath. That's exactly what I mean. Gar made a tisk sound. Shut. Fee half sighed the word. Just figured I should let you know that I have a feeling. He shrugged. 
for the uptick I've seen. Uptick of what? Minnow tipped their head to one side. Don't worry about it. Gar gave a small grin. I may or may not continue to worry about it. Minnow frowned. Hold on, Gar said, as Minnow finished their sentence. He realized he hadn't actually checked his phone for a while, so he moved to set down the cleaning supplies. As he turned on his phone, he'd gotten a message from Zazara, saying something about them and the kids getting ice cream. Gar felt a little more reassured of his previous doubts and worries from earlier. At least, they were communicating with him. He responded with a quick approval, grateful he bothered to remember before his response would have been too late. Then he turned his attention back to Minnow, Tilly, and Fee. What was that? Tilly leaned forward slightly. Zazra, Hope's friend. She had a question. Gar looked down. Something about ice cream. That boy in ice cream. Oh my god, I feel like every time I'm around him, he's talking about it. Minnow was shaking their heads slightly. He likes ice cream. Gar put his phone away. It's one of those safe foods? Tilly worded it like a statement, but had the tone like it was a question. Not really. If it doesn't have any chunks in it? Yes. Gar nodded. Wait, so are Hope and Whimsy coming back soon? Fee asked, leaning on the couch's armrest. I don't know. Definitely later than expected now. Gar scrunched his nose at Fee, curious as to why she was asking. Oh, I just had a couple games I thought they would like. She gestured to the television, and a console with several games set up next to it. Kept forgetting about them until now. Both Minnow and Tilly immediately perked up, speaking in unison. What games? They briefly exchanged glances with each other before turning their attention back to Phoenix. Oh god, it's spreading. Fee muttered under her breath, before shaking her head and continuing. I have several. Platformers, sandbox, side-scrollers, RPGs. I have everything from big titles to a fair few indie games, several of which have made me break down sobbing by the end of the story. I regret saying that. I heard side-scrollers! Minnow immediately sounded excited. What kind of RPGs? Tilly clasped her hands together. Feel free to look through them. Phoenix gestured to the pile. Tilly moved over to look at the pile of games while Minnow just kept their eyes locked on Phoenix. Gar wasn't entirely sure why, but they looked unsure. Is, uh, something the matter? Fee coughed. No. Minnow immediately turned their head away. You, uh have a lot of games in that pile. Yeah? She tilted her head, looking at the pile with a puzzled expression. I guess it's a lot. I don't have much to compare it to, though. Just, uh, out of curiosity, do you have a favorite? Minna was speaking slightly quieter now. Mostly it depends on my mood, but... There is one I always come back to. Fee walked past them, and rifled through a few game cases, picking up one from the pile and showing it to them. The river ends at the ocean, the first game I ever played after I left. I have the sequel somewhere around here too. You actually finished that game? Minnow raised their eyebrows, staring wide-eyed at the case. Yeah. Several times, actually. I even 100%ed it once. I got every piece of clothing, every spell, maxed every stat. Phoenix shivered. Never again. I... Minnow looked almost shocked. I'll admit, I've never actually managed to finish that game. That's impressive. Oh, so you've played it before? Fee seemed to perk up a bit at the realization. Yeah, but like, I kept getting stuck? 
I gave up on it. Minnow sighed, like they were admitting defeat. Which boss were you hung up on? I could see if I have any pointers, she said, her claws tapping against the case. Lionfish, Minnow grumbled, looking agitated. Fee grimaced. Right, pie face. The only advice I have for that guy is to abuse the healing shield spell and get good at dodging his kicks. Worst part of his mechanics, though, is the fact that you have to beat an even harder version of him again. Plus, week three's boss at the same time in order to get the secret ending. She glared at the ground. I had to fight that secret boss so many times to get all of his drops. The sound of a lionfish spouting off inspirational quotes while dropkicking me is ingrained into my head. Probably a dumb question, but uh, could you show me? I don't know if that's possible for you, but uh... Minnow looked almost embarrassed to be asking Fee that question. Wait, the main story boss or the secret boss? Fee looked up, scrunching her nose slightly in confusion. Both? I mean, if you're up for it. Mostly meant the main story boss, though. Minnow shifted from one foot to another. Fee took a deep breath. Sure, just... I'll need a second to mentally prepare myself. She took the cartridge out of the case and put it into the console. She turned it and the television on and walked over to sit on the couch. By the way, the port has an optional two-player mode, if you're interested, I mean. She gingerly held up one of the remotes to Minnow, looking unsure. I'm incredibly interested. Minnow took the remote, sounding entirely genuine. Gar smiled a little bit at that. Huh. Fee sounded almost lost for a second, before shaking her head slightly and continuing. Well, alright then. For ease of mind, Player 2 is invulnerable, so you don't need to dodge any attacks. Two-player also gives you extra spells to use. She continued to list off notes as she began to set it up. Gar moved over a bit to watch them, as Tilly gained interest in what they were talking about. Minnow leaned in, listening to Phoenix with curiosity as she continued to finish the setup and rattle off a few other notes. Gar made a small observation that today might have been the first time Minnow has looked at Phoenix with anything other than a snarky or antagonistic expression. He was happy to see it. He turned his attention to the game they were going to play. He had nothing better to do until his kids got back. It wouldn't hurt to watch them play whatever it was they were going to play. Whatever it was Phoenix had said. Together. <laughs> 